And there's been moments in my life that really opened my eyes to shit. I mean, like when fucking when Gus died, when Peep died, I mean, that, that shit really fucking opened... I mean, shit, my last conversation with Gus is I'm going to beat the fuck out of him when he got to L.A. because he had posted that video with all the Zans in his fucking mouth. Mm. You know what I mean? It, I don't know. I, I found out my girl was pregnant literally like 10 minutes before I got the phone call that Gus died. And that kind of like opened my eyes a lot to the situation. And a lot of times these kids die not because of the fucking drugs, but because everybody <coughs> freaks the fuck out when they pass out and they don't fucking call an ambulance. Oh, really? I mean, I, I think... The whole peep situation, you know what I mean? I, mean, I put a reward out trying to find out. I was just all fucked up, and I was hurt because I lost my little fucking homie. I just wanted to figure out what, exactly what the fuck happened. You know what I mean? Af after really speaking with his mother and, like, doing the documentary and all that bullshit, I kind of came to terms with the reality of what had happened was, yeah, it was a fentanyl death, bro, but if they would have fucking called the ambulance immediately, we wouldn't be sitting here talking about that <laughs> shit in the past tense. Well, I think a lot there. of these kids, same situation. Yeah. I mean, but here in here in California, thank God, there is a law that if you do call an ambulance, they're not they're not gonna fuck with you in terms of the police shit at all. Mm. It, they will come and they'll save your fucking friend, and you don't have to fucking bury your homies because you fucking panicked. You know what I mean? I think there's way too many white kids, too many, way too many Mexican kids, way too many black kids that are just dying for no fucking reason. Right. I think and it, no Care one about it so much. Yeah, now. nobody ever wants to talk about it, but the reality is, bro, it's like if you Narcan someone immediately, they're gonna survive. You know what I mean? If you call the ambulance immediately, they're going to fucking survive. I mean, <laughs> when the paramedics actually got to peep in that bus, they took a temperature of his body. I think it was like 87.1, if I'm not mistaken. His mom posted a it's kind of cryptic message on his, tw on his feed one time on Instagram with the actual degree. And what she was trying to say with that picture and the degree, I've read some weird shit on Reddit. People are like, oh, you could look at it like this. They're trying to, trying to like analyze it. But the reality is when you die... You're, when you're alive, your body's usually around 98 degrees. Every hour after you're dead, it goes down like a degree or two, regardless of what the temperature in the room is. So when we see Gus's temperature was at 87.1, how many fucking hours did that kid sit fucking dead? Right. And then we saw everything from the Bexy video of him dancing in front of him, not even realizing what was going on. But were, were the, was, by the time the ambulance got there, was he already gone? Yeah. He was, his body was at 87 degrees. Right. So what? He's been sitting there for six, seven fucking hours dead? I mean, that documentary, bro, like, it really fucked with me in the head a little bit because a lot of things were kind of left unsaid for legal, legal purposes. Oh, really? You know what I mean? So, like, I have to kind of walk a tight line with that kind of shit, too, because it's still litigation that's happening right now. But the reality is, is, like, a lot of people weren't talked about that were management and the like, mm. you know what I mean, that played a part in this whole situation. The reality is, is that Gus fucking loved drugs. He liked doing drugs, and he'll pretty much do any drug that was put in front of him at the time. Right. Which a lot of these kids, they get into this mode where, like, it's like some cool shit to just be down to get all fucked up. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I mean, you see it so much, and it's like, I feel like the peep thing really broke the situation open of, like, how much do the grown-ups in the room have blood on their hands yeah. when this kind of thing happens? Do, like, how do you feel about how that lawsuit's gonna play out, and do you think I mean, what, who, I think who do you there's. Think a, I think at a certain point, it becomes a financial battle because the reality is, like, alive, he would it would have been worth how much, bro? Right. I mean, like, it like blows my fucking mind the traction he was getting, like in reality, like you know what I mean? Like, right. he would have been the biggest artist I think in the world at this point. I'm, and I'm not even trying to blow his like blow him up like that, but the reality is he was very representative of a lot of different cultures. Mm. His grandfather was a rogue scholar that wrote a lot of books about Milano Zapata and shit like that. So like he definitely had a different understanding of the, a, a worldview than most of these other artists. You know what I mean? And you saw the traction that was happening. I mean, shit, he was walking major fashion shows in the whole nine yard. Mm. He was really getting that full fucking like exposure that I rarely, rarely see a kid get. Right. You know what I mean? I don't think there's a lot of kids that could even pull that shit off. No, definitely. I mean, he had he, a certain order to him, bro. It was like his music didn't get as big as like we, everybody kind of felt like it mm -hmm. could. But then, meanwhile, well, I introduced him to McConan. You know what I mean? And when I introduced him to McConan, my intent and purposes with that meeting was to so start writing these big ass records. Right. And I think you saw like a big change, and a lot of the fans just kind of disagreed with the direction it was kind of going at that point as well. Right. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, McConan, i be honest with you, I don't think he's still, like, right from that whole situation, bro. Like, mm. he lives in Portland now and, like, kind of avoids everything. Doesn't want to really be involved much anymore because there's still a whole album material that hasn't been released yet. You know what I mean? There's still a lot of material. I have songs of his that are on release. It's been this weird, like, back and forth with everyone because they just don't know who to speak to because at the end of the day, his mother doesn't control the label. 
You know what I mean? His father still owns a percentage of his shit as well. And I think that kind of like mix up right there is going to prevent things from really coming out. And there's a big, everyone doesn't want to look like they're taking advantage of that kid as well, bro. And I think we saw a lot of different people like kind of use his death as a marketing tool almost for themselves, try to blow themselves up. Not to get so specific on certain people, bro, but like when you fucking ride the coattails of someone who just died hard, 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 I think everyone was trying to fight to see who was their best, who was his best friend, who not, you know what I mean? Everyone from the GBC kids, Nick, and everybody else kind of like fighting with each other over shit, you know what I mean? That was definitely a moment where I was just like, It's like, bro, this is getting cringy as fuck. way too old to be, like, this is just not how you handle a death. Like, there should not be this much argument between his friends after somebody passes. There was just a lot of weird shit. The reality is he left L.A. to get the fuck away from everybody. Right. And that's what he did. And I think... And you saw what was happening with with all of the the rest of the GBC kids during that time, sending out tweets, making threats to them in the whole fucking nine yards (laughs) because they wanted to be involved. You know what I mean? All respect to those kids, you know what I mean, at the end of the day, but... I think they just didn't really know how to handle it. And so many people started asking questions, you know, and they kind of realized that answering those questions in a public forum would get them some type of, like, pull mm. or push. It makes sense. I mean, we saw a lot of kids get signed to major label deals based on the fact that they could, they could potentially take that wave mm. and run with it. But you know what's weird is with Peep and with, like, X and with Juice World, I feel like in all those cases... I've seen a ton of people <clears throat> basically trying to like clone mm-hmm. their style after they pass, and I feel like it never works. No, I think and a I, lot of people were even saying that about Juice. You yeah. know what I mean? At a certain point, because you know he comes in after the fact. Yeah, you know, with both of them dead. I think that a lot of people thought that Juice was kind of trying. We to did that legend take song, that little deep lane or whatever. But then I felt like Juice was so good. That they were just all a bunch of young kids that. making good music, bro. And I yeah. think that no shit they're gonna get like influenced by who's popping and who's up right now. 